What is a streak test? Well, a streak test is a way of identifying minerals in the field or after you bring them home and rocks. And it's kind of cool. You could use unglazed porcelain, like the bottom of a coffee cup or <laughs> the underside of your toilet lid. Mine's all streaked up with uh, different lines from using it when I couldn't find my streak stick or my streak plate. And there's also this little gizmo, which is a ceramic rod attached to a uh, handle for doing streak tests. So, what's the purpose of a streak test? Well, a lot of people find stuff out in the field. Yeah, it's something that looks kind of like this. All bumpy and funky looking. And they may think that's a meteorite. Okay, so one of the ways to check that is to do a simple streak test on it. Another piece here. It looks an awful lot like the other one, but it's also a different mineral. And I can tell the difference between the two of them. Also, by doing a streak test. Okay. Um, I'm going to point the camera down a little bit here and show you how I go about doing this. And we're going to look at the what we got Rocks and Minerals by Simon and Schuster. It's a good book. And it's pretty cool because each mineral that you go to in the description of the physical properties, it also tells you about the streak. Okay, and so for turquoise, we're looking at this, uh, da, 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 physical properties, also translucent, and then streak white or pale green, infusible. So you can check these different minerals, and you can do a streak test and be sure of what you've got. Okay, so give me a second here, we'll get the camera set up to show you how you go about doing this. Okay, so here we have my pile of rocks and tools. This is uh, this is Uncle Ron's little pamphlet for his ceramic uh, tester, his rod. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so here we go. Okay, we got the ceramic rod here. Why would I have a coffee cup? Well, because the bottom of the coffee cup is unglazed porcelain. Okay, and it'll do the same thing. It's a lot handier to have something like this along with you, or they make what's called a streak plate that you can use for the same purpose. All right. Okay, so we're trying to look up this one. It kind of looks like a meteorite. And I'm already pretty suspicious that it's probably going to be hematite because you can see some rust right in here. and come off on my finger. Okay, now if you look up hematite in the book, it's going to show you that hematite is going to have a kind of a brick red streak. Um, let's look it up here and see exactly what it says. Okay, we're going to go into the back here and we're going to go to hematite. Hematite, page 65. We'll quickly go up there. 49. 65, hematite. Now it's showing you hematite in its crystal form, and but a lot of what we find out in the field isn't going to be that fancy. It's going to be more like this. Okay, but in the physical properties, hard, 5.5 to 6.5. Now that you test with a different kit. Um, I may go into that at another time, but this is for quick identification in the field. And, uh, okay, and fra very heavy, fragile, no cleavage, opaque with metallic luster. Blood red tints in thin section. Streak, dark cherry red, making it easy to distinguish among... among Hematite, magnetite, and limonite. Dissolve slowly when heated in concentrated hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid. Okay, so I call it a brick red streak, or they call it a dark cherry red streak. And uh, But here's what happens. Okay, you take your piece of hematite, and you got your streak stick, or your coffee cup. We're going to do it on both. And we're going to just rub it on here. Just like that. What you get is this. Can you see it? I certainly hope so. But it gives you that reddish streak right there. Okay, we're going to do it on a coffee cup now. Everybody has a coffee cup with them. Same thing. We've got a spot that I haven't used here. You notice my coffee cup's kind of streaked up. Um, right in here.
you might be able to see this a little bit better. And right there's my streak. Okay. Yeah. And it'll rub right off there to be reused. Same with the streak stick. Okay, that's how you do a streak test. Now, each one of these different minerals are going to give you a different streak. And these three right here, actually these four all look the same pretty much, don't they? Okay, the difference is going to be one of these is magnetite. And though it looks the same as the others, when you do a streak test with magnetite, see there? Okay, now we have what a kind of a blackish gray streak as opposed to the, the red one. And it'll do the same on here. And there's the two streaks side by side. Okay. The one's darker, and that's the magnetite, and the lighter reddish one is the hematite. Looking at them together, other than the size, they pretty much look the same. This one is going to be a lot more magnetic, hence the name magnetite. And it can actually be a uh, magnetic, like a lodestone in some cases, and hematite. Okay. Now this one, which looks totally different. And it's kind of shiny. Okay, so streak test on it will reveal. We're going to do the black. And once again, uh, you can see it there. It's tough for the camera, but it's hematite. It's got the reddish, the reddish streak to it right here. Okay, now on to some other minerals. And to clean these off, you simply wipe them on a rag. In this case, I'll wipe them on my shirt. All right, here we have a piece of galena. And this is very heavy. And some people say, oh my gosh, that's silver or whatever. Um, it's galena. And for galena, you should have a grayish streak. Okay, so galena. See that shiny gray streak? Okay, that's a good indicator you have galena right there. And it's quite different from the magnetite. There's really no mistake in the two. The streak is similar. Okay, but it's still different. Okay. And as you go through different minerals, you get different colors. Simple as that. It makes the identification real easy. Now here we got a piece of epidote. Okay, epidote's very hard. And being very hard, it takes a little more pressure, but there's not much in the way of a streak for epidote. Not much at all. It's not going to show you anything. It's actually taking the porcelain off the cup. This material is too hard to identify that way. So now we're into um, gemstones and whatnot, and there's you have to check the hardness and there's other ways to check what type of a rock or mineral it is. And this is strictly amateur stuff here, guys. I'm not trying to be a geologist. I'm just showing you what I use and what I do to quickly identify stuff in the field. Okay, here's another one that's kind of interesting. At first glance, you'd think magnetite probably or hematite. And a quick streak test tells you right away it's hematite. And that relieves any doubt that you have a meteorite here. A meteorite is not going to streak like that. Now, it may have desert varnish on it or something to cause it to give an initial streak. But once you clean off an end of it and try to do a streak test, there normally is no streak from a meteorite. Okay. Here is an interesting rock. It's just one of those that you look at and you just want to pick up. And you wonder what the nice mineralization is in there. Well, I find a spot with just some of this mineralization, and we're going to check it right here. And once again, hematite. 
which is very common in the gold fields. Okay, this one, heavy, slightly magnetic, but I bet much, much of you can tell what it's going to be already, can't you? Okay, my call would be hematite out in the field. And once again, we're going to do a streak. And sure enough, kind of the red-brown streak indicates hematite. Now here's an interesting one. This one's got a little bit of turquoise in it. And it's copper mixed in with some sort of a host rock. Any guesses on what that might be? Okay, here we go. Testing the host rock. No streak there. Over to here. And we're getting indication that it's hematite. You can also see where I rubbed it right there. A little bit of rust coming off. Okay. That is how you do a streak test. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Each mineral is going to give you a little different color. Here's another real funky looking piece. Got some copper showing in it. Crystallization and red rust. So we're already guessing what this one is too, aren't we? And once again, although it's not real bright, it's showing hematite. So there you go. That's really all there is to it. And uh, it can really help in the field to have something like this along or use your coffee cup and uh, does the same thing. But after a while, the coffee cup gets so discolored that you, you can't really tell what you're rubbing on anymore. And cleaning up the porcelain is pretty easy. You just do it with a, you know, a, uh, one of those green scrubbies and some dish soap or something along those lines. You just scrub it off there or just rub it off um, and rub it on a piece of cloth. It'll clean it up enough to do the next streak test. That comes in real handy in the field. It's kind of fun. And it helps with identifying rocks and minerals. And why the heck would I want to identify rocks and minerals out in the desert? Simple as this. Now the reason I brought both these rocks home, um, especially the, the hematite and the magnetite, is they're hot rocks. They give a good signal on VLF detector and on a lot of PI detectors. And as a result, and curiosity, I bring them home in an ideal. And there's a really good reason for that. And uh, the other ones, some of them just caught my eye. And uh, like the turquoise, anything blue out there catches my eye right off the bat. And I bring those in IDM too. But there is a very good reason to identify all these rocks. And that's where we're going with this. Most of these minerals that we just identified are associated with gold deposits. Hematite is a type of iron ore or uh, decomposed iron. Magnetite, again, iron. And iron, which is often associated with gold, or most often associated with gold, I don't think you ever find the two without each other. And uh, so it's good to know what minerals you have. Being able to identify the minerals in this by glancing at them is real important. And look at the crystallization in there. Pretty neat. But being able to identify this stuff out in the field can go a long way in helping you track down a good place to go prospecting. And we all should have some knowledge of the ground we're around and why the gold would be there. And by being able to identify these rocks, you're giving yourself that knowledge. And in the future, you can be walking into a new area and glance at the ground. And like one I'm showing in some of my other videos, here's this, here's that, it's on top of this. That's how I learned all that, by bringing this stuff home and identifying it. If I don't know what a rock is in the field, I bring that darn thing home and find out what it is. And once I find out what it is, yeah, I learned something which is really cool. And I've also got a better idea of the surroundings. And I can look in the literature that I've been doing studying that area, or if I am going to study that area and find out what rocks were associated with the major gold deposits in the area. So anyway, hope this was fun. And uh, these things are available from my buddy Ron. And uh, I don't know if he's got them up on a website or what. 
Yeah, and I'm not sure the cost. I think they're like 13, 12 or 13 bucks, something like that. But anyway, more on this thing later too. I'm not really trying to do a sponsorship here. I'm just showing a really cool tool that'll uh, help identify stuff out in the field. I've always used a coffee cup, like I said, or they make little streak plates you can buy of unglazed porcelain. I used to carry around a chunk of a inside of a toilet that I broke the lid up on so I could have a piece. But being able to identify minerals in the field and rocks is a big help. A big help. For now, next year up.